The topic for today's presentation is XML and GAN. What I want you to remember by the end of this presentation are the basics of XML and the list of XML related technologies like XML schema definition, the various types of XML parsers and XSLT which every programmer should know. If you have worked with HTML, you already know the predefined set of tags that HTML comes with. These static tags, when used to wrap your data, provide your data a special meaning or value. Browsers like Internet Explorer or Firefox know how to interpret these tags and present your data accordingly. But with XML, which stands for Extensible Markup Language, it allows you to write your own elements or tags that you can use to wrap your data. So let's get started with an e-commerce example. What I have here is an order with one item and that, that's, that's what this XML here represents. Any XML document starts off with a prologue, which has the version of XML that we are using, the encoding of the data, which could be UTF-8, UTF-16, and also a standalone attribute. We'll discuss more about the standalone attribute when we get to the XML schema definitions and DTDs in a future presentation. If you look at the XML, what I have here is an order which has two child elements, which are customer name and item. The item in turn has the item ID, item name and quantity. And what I have here is a comment, uh, that's an XML comment. Every XML document should be well formed. By well formedness, all it means is it should follow a few syntactical guidelines. Every XML, to name a few, every XML document should have a root element. Every start element should also have an ending element. And every element that starts within another element should also end within that element. XSD stands for XML Schema Definition. If you are uh, coming from an object-oriented programming background, it's like a class file. And then once you have your XML Schema file, you can have any number of XML documents which uh, actually bind to it. Um, so, a schema file also allows you to validate your XML. So say you have a schema file for an order and if this XML complies to it, it's called a valid XML document. So we have two um, sets of rules that apply here. One is performance and the other one is validation. The two major advantages of using XML is XML has the data and also the metadata. So in this case, for example, the data here is 007 and the metadata is the item ID. Any application looking at the, which is looking at this XML knows exactly what to do by looking at the XML file itself or the element itself. And another advantage of using XML is it's hierarchical. It's very easy to navigate and get to what exactly you want within the XML document. There are very various types of parsers that XML parsers that each programming language or every program, most of the programming languages support. They are DOM and SACS, validating and non-validating. Parsers are nothing but programs that can interpret, load your XML into memory, interpret them, and allow you to uh, access the data within your XML document. We have DOM parsers, which which stand, DOM stands for Document Object Model and it loads the entire XML document into memory and uh, once you do that you can access each element one by one like you access the customer name and then you can access the data within it you access the item then you, access, you can access the item ID under it so it's one at a time but it loads the entire document into memory whereas the SACS parser which stands for simple API for XML parsing allows it's an event based parser so you write a handler and once you do that what it does is, every time it sees an element or it sees an attribute or it sees a comment, it keeps firing an event and you can handle however you need to in your application. You can take the uh, appropriate action. 
and you can skip which you don't need. So the advantage, main advantage with SACS is it doesn't load the whole entire document into memory. We'll discuss more on this. We'll definitely do some hands-on examples on this when I do JAXP, which stands for Java API for XML parsing in a later presentation. XSLT, uh, the validating and non-validating parsers. It's basically, um, if you have a schema file, a validating parser can validate your XML against that schema file. Most of the parsers that are available out there are validating. You can turn it on, I think, by using a flag. We, we, didn't, we never see non-validating parsers. XSLT stands for Extensible Style Sheet Language Transformations. Uh, it comprises of XSL, which is Extensible Style Sheet Language, and XPath, uh, which allows you to get to the exact point um, without going through or without, it's not like an event or it's not like a DOM. Uh, once you have your document in memory, you can get to that set location within an XML document using XPath syntax. Uh, we'll, be doing, um, we'll be doing some hands-on examples on these topics as we progress. Basically, XSLT allows you to transform one type of XML into another or XML into HTML, which you can then display um, or present to a client or a browser. To leave you with a simple XPath example, if you want to get to the customer name here, this is how your XPath will look. Order slash customer name. It's more like um, browsing through your files of uh, file system. Although XML could be used uh, in, for different purposes, the two main areas I see it being used are to exchange data in between applications and to configure to, uh, as a configuration file for your application or any third party application that you are using, a third party software that you are using. So web services, JMS, uh, you'll see XML everywhere that is a data exchange because it's data independent again. The consumer will exactly know what to do with an XML and also it can validate using a schema file that makes XML uh, really powerful. We'll be discussing each of these topics in detail. I'll be doing the XML schema definition in the next uh, presentation. I'll be doing some hands-on. I'll be giving you more examples on how exactly XSD works. And also we'll be doing, as I said, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be doing some JAXP examples to see how exactly DOM and SAX works. And also some XSLD style sheets uh, using XPath later. Until then, keep learning and sharing. Thanks for watching.